All right. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Council Member Redmond. Here. Council Member Collings. Here. Council Member Stearns. Mayor Pro Tem Sackleff. Here. Mayor Clure. Here. Here. Um, we have a special presentation. Chief, are we waiting on a couple? Should be coming in. They were off call for service, but they should be coming in right now. Okay. No, oh, okay. Um, I think. Todd, our city manager, is um, joining us online today, so he's going to make a brief introduction and then we'll go through the special presentation. Okay, so um, first off, I would like to um, sincerely thank the Mount Shasta Police Department for their effort on September 11th on potentially averting a school shooting, um, work their work with uh, the school district uh, and their diligence in um, ensuring that we wrap this suspect up and uh, avert a potential crisis uh, was uh, exemplary actions across the board. And, um, you know, I've got a resolution uh, in front of you all uh, to recognize the department and to thank them for uh, their work. And um, Tessa, I don't know if you want to add a couple things before the chief speaks. <clears throat> um, sure. Yeah, I was with the department shortly after everything had happened, and I just speak for myself as a parent that I was really impressed with um, the accuracy, the timeliness, uh, the effectiveness to make sure that our town and our students were safe. So um, just wanted to say a sincere thank you to the, the police department for that day. Um, Chief, do you want to say something before I read the resolution or do you want me to go into it now? I'll let you go ahead and read the resolution. Sure, okay. Uh, Kathy, what's the resolution number? CCR-23-28. Okay. So resolution CCR-23-28, a resolution of the City Council of the City of Mount Shasta recognizing Mount Shasta Police Department personnel for outstanding job performance. Whereas the police department has participated in active shooter training and scenarios, and whereas that training and preparation by the police department in coordination with the Mount Shasta High School has prepared both agencies on responding to threats of violence at schools, and whereas on September 11th, 2023, the police department respond, responded to a report of a potential threat of violence directed towards the Mount Shasta High School. And whereas dispatchers, officers, and supervisors work diligently to investigate those threats, and as a result, the police department arrested a suspect and prevented a potential mass shooting from occurring. I'll speak louder. Whereas. <laughs> Pause for a dramatic effect. Whereas the entire police department was involved in some manner in the investigation, the city council would like to commend and recognize specific police department members for their efforts. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the city council of the city of Mount Shasta that the following personnel are commended. Officer Gregory Russell, who was the lead investigating officer. Dispatch Supervisor Jennifer Lensing, who was the initial dispatcher and coordinated all of the information that came into the police department. Sergeant Devin Pretty, who was the frontline supervisor and directly supported the investigation. The foregoing resolution was duly passed and adopted. Oh, that's it. Okay. Yes. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. First, I'd like to recognize uh, Jennifer Lindstein. If you don't know her, she's uh, been with the department for a couple of years. She's our new uh, dispatch supervisor, taking over for Don Snur. <laughs> she took, uh, everything starts with dispatch from taking the call to getting the information off the officers to coordinating the information the officers are reading, receiving, and make sure that everything is getting disseminated. Um, without that, 
detailed, orientated uh, attention to detail. We could have missed things, information might have missed, or research uh, that was done to look into the case further might have been missed. So thank you, Jennifer. <laughs> One of our new officers up here, Russell, been a little over a year uh, with the department. Um, he took the initial call, uh, made all the contacts, uh, conducted the investigation, wrote the search warrants, which for most departments, a first year officer doesn't normally write warrants, but for our department, um, we work to make sure that all our officers are capable from day one. He wrote the search warrants, he did the interviews, he did the evidence, and it was his uh, diligence and expeditiously uh, moving through this that led us to a positive conclusion where nobody was injured, including the suspect. And finally, uh, Sergeant Devin Pretty, he's been here the second longest, 11 years with us now, so behind me. He was the supervisor, he was coordinating everything. Um, it was in fact his knowledge of a past event that was able to be brought forward to uh, Officer Gregory, which directly led to us being able to develop enough probable cause for a search warrant. Um, if you don't know, we were uh, hampered in the beginning of the investigation. Uh, we were, the family was not cooperating with us, so that delayed us in being able to uh, cooperate whether or not the threat was actually uh, factual or not, and as it turned out, it was. So he uh, ran with that. that. He was the liaison to the uh, school. He was in constant contact and spent a lot of time actually on campus coordinating with the school for safety plans and such while we worked through the... Uh, process. I'm starting to right, guys. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Chief, for your participation. Thank you all. Uh, we will still need a motion and a second and a um, formal action on this item. Okay, I'll move to approve uh, CCR-23-28 as uh, just read. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Passes 5-0. All right, we will be moving now to public comment. Anyone in the audience wishing to speak, please come on up. Please state your name and where you live, please. Good evening. My name is John Delamico. I've been in this community for almost 25 years. And I'm, I'm 90 years of age. I'm going to be moving out of here to Spokane, Washington soon. There are a couple of issues that I'd like to bring to your attention. Over on Pine Street, there's a vacant lot by the way, I spent seven years on a planning commission, and my, my demise was Mr. Stearns. He decided that uh, I'd spent enough time, and uh, I would, after the seven years. However, there was a gentleman that came to our our meeting, and he had uh, he was going to pour concrete the following day, and the planning commission decided. You don't have the uh, Alpine theme, and therefore we've got a vacant lot over on Pine Street. The other issue that I'd like to address, pardon me, and I forgot to put in my hearing aids, <laughs> the, uh, the other issue I think is very important, and it needs to be addressed by everyone in this community. We just had a train go by going north. If we had an emergency over here, there's only one ingress, egress, and we need to resolve that. Jerry Hickey and I worked on it for several years, and uh, it just never materialized. So I guess what my concern is, hopefully this body can help to address the issue with the, the uh, County Board of Supervisors, 
with the Recreation and Park District and everyone else concerned. But I hope you can get a secondary egress. We looked at going down and using uh, Kingston Road. So if, if you people can help to may expedite that, it's very important that uh, it be addressed and taken care of. And I want to wish you all great success. I've, I've seen a couple of faces here, but God bless you. And my time's running out, and I'm going to be right on time. Take good care. Thank you, Mr. Delamico, and safe travels. Ciao. Thank you. As I say in the vernacular. <laughs> all right. Anyone else wish to come up and speak? Come on up. My name is Monty Messenger. Uh, I'm a member of the Mount Shasta Fire Protection District. I also live in the district. Um, I've been a volunteer there for now th three years. And when I first started, uh, we had seven people, permanent people paid on the fire department. We're now down to five. Can you speak a little closer to the mic? Sure. Thank you. Okay. So we're now down to five. Um, Staffing has been coming an issue over the summer trying to find people. And we're, you know, we, we have an acting chief now. We're trying to fill that other slot, and we could really use the help. Now, the city council, I, I'm coming here on my own. I haven't talked to the chief or anybody else, but I know the Mount Shasta Fire Protection District pays a significant amount of money to the city to help with staffing, to pay for staffing. I don't know why the why those two positions haven't been filled yet, other than somebody said they might be saving money. But it's imperative that those positions be filled because we're running short of volunteers. I volunteered my time as best I can, but we need people there to drive apparatus, to respond to calls all the time. Um, we'd like to see just we just want to get some help. Finding volunteers anymore has been very difficult, so having permanent staff is important. Um, some of the staff that's on duties, we get called. We could be up all night for days at a time, depending on the call volume. Something, and it goes up and down. Now we're coming into the winter season where we'll have more flu fires, more chance for structure fires, and then more accidents in the snow and the rain. So we're just trying to come up with, you know, some more people to help respond and be there on a daily basis to make sure the equipment's running and. Uh, up to par, the batteries are charged in, in the equipment, the maintenance is being done. You know, I can come and help when I am available, but like me and a lot of the other volunteers, we're only available so much. Okay, so we would hope, just implore the city to fill that other position and give us an extra set of hands. And I don't just understand why we can't fill those jobs yet. Okay? Thank you very much. Right. Sure. Monty? Could I ask a couple of quick questions? Sure. Oh, what are those two positions that uh, that aren't being filled? I want to make sure I understand which ones they are. Well, we right now we've had the last chief leave by resignation, and I understand as a former state employee, you know, when somebody retires, there's issues with hiring people right behind them. But usually, when somebody leaves to go to another agency, there's not a lot of payout or stuff. The, the job's usually open and can fill right after that. We have another chief position that is currently on medical leave. I don't know if we can fill behind that or not. But just another body, you know, I'm not saying fill both of them, but we just need another body to help delegate some responsibilities to permanent staff so things can get accomplished. Right now, with a, a limited amount of staff plus people in training, we still have the, the business of the fire department to do. So having an extra body helps delegate authority out, giving other people some responsibility, get some tasks done without dumping everything on one person. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, anyone else wish to come up and speak? David Ream of Mount Shasta. Albert Einstein's famous quote is, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. On 12-6-2014, my entrance to an education of hate 
started as John Redman as a passenger in his own vehicle, drives by my partner, Lana Smith, our dog, Leon, and myself in front of our business, The Dream Inn. Mr. Reem, the we're not, finger Mr. Reem, we're not gonna be singling out any particular council members anymore. Um, Mr. Elder here just singled out Mr. Stearns and there was no debate coming from you then, so I will continue. The one finger salute was given with the now well-known litany of profanities, expletives, and false accusations. Minutes later, as he stood in front of his handsome John speakeasy, he shouts down to me in front of my business, Mr. Reem, come down here and fight me like a Mr. man. Mr. Reem, this is as not acceptable. As an educated Christian, that is roughly what I do. With this Mr. Is, Gibson in my living room, I Mr. file Reem, charges not, as what I am told is a felony to challenge to a fight in a public space. Thank you very much. My response we are since done now. that time is to turn the other cheek to almost all respond to this verbal abuse with silence. Mr. Reem. Mr. Reem. Mr. Reem. Mr. Reem, it is time to step down. By the judge of lack of corpus, the Mount Shasta police never showed up for the hearing. Mr. David, you enough. Anyone else wish to come up and speak? Anyone online? Johanna. Hello, Johanna. Please begin when ready. Good evening. Um, I was just wanted to comment on the speaker that spoke about the emergency egress and wanted to mention again um, something that I've brought up in past years. Um, about doing, and I, I know this would be expensive, but maybe with all the grant money, you know, to do um, an, um, to do uh, an underpass under Alma, so that if there is a train wreck or other situation, that that vehicles can get out to Highway Five and away from the mountain. Um, and that also reminded me of something else that I think is still really important um, for our city. And I understand other cities are doing it too. I, I was, you know, we talked about it a couple of years ago, which is an emergency siren. And that's important um, because when we have an emergency event, often cell towers are uh, not working and not all people have their cell phones with them. And so you have you know, elderly or, or just people working on the job and they're, you know, maybe it, they left it in the car or something. And so um, I understand like even Dunsmuir has done an emergency siren. <laughs> so I'm just wondering, you know, if that's something we could revisit in the future, because I do think it's, it is an important, um, I, I think it's an important um, communication and alert for people in the community that alerts everybody at the same time. So anyway, so I just wanted to mention that since the other gentleman spoke about um, uh, emergency situations. So anyway, thank you. Have a, have a good evening. Thank you, Johanna. Anyone else? All right, we will be closing public comment, moving on to council and staff comments. Todd, would you like to start us off? Sure. I um, first would like to introduce Jeff Mitchum, our um, new planner, who's graciously agreed to be here on his first day on the job. Um, and I can't say how excited I am to have him uh, starting and on staff, very experienced guy, um, a really, you know, amazing background. I, I'm looking for um, looking forward to some great things happening with him on board. Jeff, do you want to say a couple things about you know, your background or <clears throat> where are you coming from? Is it on now? Am it on? should be on, on, yeah. Oh, good. All right. Thank you, uh, Todd. Appreciate it. Uh, kind words. Um, it's an honor to be here. It's a joy to be here. Uh, I feel like in a long way I've, I've come home. 
uh, spent a lot of my youth um, exploring the mountains um, of the Siskiyous and uh, Southern Oregon, throughout the West with a father who drug us up and down uh, these peaks. So um, there is a soft spot in my heart for them, um, indeed. So to be doing what I do for a living uh, in an astoundingly beautiful community like this is, is indeed an honor. Um, and I look forward to reaching out to each and every one of you to uh, get to know you and to get to know what your initiatives are and your priorities and your vision and uh, offering to serve you um, as best I can. Thank you very much for being here. Welcome. We're so happy to have Thank you. you. For a beer, we'll talk. <laughs> okay, next. Um, <clears throat> give you a quick update on the enhanced infrastructure finance district work. So um, the county is set to hear their version of the resolution of intention on November 7th. Uh, their county council is um, reviewing that document and everything looks like a go. And with that, we're, uh, you know, there are still a lot of negotiations that need to take place in terms of what properties are in, what properties are, are um, not in, uh, you know, tax sharing agreement, et cetera. Um, as part of this process, you know, obviously one of the major things that we want to see come out of this is to see if we can get the landing developed. Uh, we've talked about Kendrick Enterprises uh, potentially wanting to take over the landing. And I had a meeting with Kendrick Enterprises, um, Bob Kendrick and his team, Cosmont, and we talked about it, you know, given the, the very limited amount of, of tax increment we're gonna see, even if the county plays along, um, the idea of them putting in infrastructure is, um, and getting paid back over time, it's gonna be involved very, very patient equity. So it's, it's um, so we're looking at other ways that we can do this. So one of the things that we kicked around and there seems to be some traction on it and um, Bob's team is looking into the details and running some numbers is uh, forming a public facilities district or a, um, a Melrose district. And that with that idea being if Kendrick Enterprises got site control of the landing, uh, forming one of these districts requires a two thirds vote of any property owner within you know, that contiguous parcel. And since if they had site control, it would just be them. So it'd be easy. And what this does is allows them to uh, levy a tax um, on themselves to uh, get infrastructure in place with the idea that over time, a combination of uh, increment would help pay back their cost. Uh, there are a couple of things we discussed, the idea of um, in lieu of um, the Melrose district, potentially having a write down on the cost of putting that infrastructure in, uh, or, or uh, um, you know, selling the property for a very nominal amount. And that is a non-starter given that it would uh, kick in prevailing wage. Uh, so it seems to be we're landing on the public facilities district. And um, with that uh, um, model, when you levy that tax, it's a pay-as-you-go system. Uh, you know, is one option, where as they um, the tax money comes in, increment comes in, they put in the infrastructure they need. The other is the ability to levy a bond um, for putting in infrastructure and their tax revenue and uh, increment over time would pay back that bond. Uh, so it's uh, we're moving full steam ahead, you know, we need to make sure that that council is okay with the approach. Um, we need to make sure that Kendrick um, Enterprises is on board, but it looks like we've got some pretty good traction, not only in terms of getting the county on board for the EIFD, but um, getting the landing in one person's hands and uh, signing a, uh, you know, if, if we work out the finances, signing a development agreement that uh, we lay out what kind of uh, development that we want to see on that property based on the general plan as it stands or uh, or changes to that general plan to ensure that we're getting the highest and best use and, and what is in the best interest of the community. Um, you know, with one of the guideposts being the work that Cosmont did on the the types of uses that seem to be 
lacking most uh, in the city of Mount Shasta and are likely to be the biggest draws. And, um, you know, one of those, of course, is, is workforce housing and a mix of, um, of um, market rate, uh, creating blue collar jobs, creating um, a, uh, some white collar jobs as well, and other mixes. And it's, that's going to be an ongoing process. But we're, we're well on our way. And I'm, I'm uh, really pleased with where we are. Um, you know, we, we've moved pretty quickly and um, we're on our way to potentially getting something done. Um, what else? So um, the conversations about the transfer of the well at uh, the deck six well on one Shasta that has been picked up again as full speed ahead after I found that uh, the uh, broker for the owner wasn't doing his work and was sort of sandbagging the city. So we have a new representative on board. We now have specs in, in their attorney's hands and hopefully we can get this thing wrapped up pretty quickly. Uh, there is a lot more uh, cooking. Uh, I think this is a, enough to chew on. What I'd like to do, um, Muriel took the time to put together a staff report for Item 7C on the consent agenda, uh, you know, she's put together uh, actuals. Uh, and I know that uh, members of council wanted an opportunity to have a back and forth with her. Um, you know, she's done a great job in laying things out and uh, wanted to, to have Muriel go through what she put together in the staff report. And then if council has questions, um, you know, Muriel will answer them. Thanks. Thank you. Um, any other staff updates? Just a couple of things. Uh, missed last council meeting. I was uh, participating in the One Pill Can Kill presentation for the uh, Athletes United at Mount Shasta High School. Uh, as you know, I've partnered up with Chris and Courtney Chase of the Sam Chase Fund. Um, the program's really taken off this year. We're countywide. Um, I just received the go-ahead from all the chiefs in the county to go anywhere I want to any school with this and present. And we were up in Wairika last week at Discovery High School. And at the end of the month, we're doing Aetna and uh, Scott Valley Junior Highs as part of the uh, trying to get the information out for the one pill can kill. Uh, you may have seen a new officer running around out there. We have Officer Sam Hopkins comes to us from the Weed Police Department. He started on the 2nd. He's got a little over 10 years of experience between Weed and Susanville, so really excited to have him. He comes to us. He's already a field training officer qualified uh, defensive tactic instructor, so he brings a lot of uh, positives to the uh, department. And here soon, if you call in the police department, you're going to hear a new voice. We have a new uh, on-call part-time dispatcher hired, Amber Hobbs. This will be her first uh, experience into the law enforcement foray, but uh, we're really excited about both. They're real sharp, and uh, we're looking forward to... Uh, Moving on. Excellent. Uh, I wanted to comment that the presentation today was honoring your officers and dispatchers, but there wasn't a direct thank you to you. You and I spent a lot of hours together when this happened, and I just wanted to personally thank you for your professionalism, and it, was, it, it blew me away. So I, I truly appreciate all your hard work. And I, 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 I can insert, I'd sure. like to add that, um, you know, uh, Chief Gibson is uh, a wonderful communicator. He makes sure that I'm in the know on everything. And, you know, we kind of game plan, uh, you know, uh, various things. And I would say that his um, communication skills are excellent. And uh, he's just been a great fit for the department. Um, and I want to thank him. Yeah, let's give him a round of applause, actually. Thank you. <clears throat> All right, um, Mira, do you want to go over those figures now, or do, should we pull that out of consent agenda, or how do you want to do that? You do it any way you'd want to. Okay. Doesn't matter to me. Okay. Um, why don't let, let's do that now as a staff report? That way we can do the consent agenda all together. So. Let's see. So it looks like page, oh, there we go. 20. Page 20 of our report, okay.
Okay, so um, so that everyone's caught up, we're on reviewing item 7C of the agenda packet. Mira, do you want to just give a brief overview of how we're looking compared to where we thought we'd be? Sure. Actually, you've, you've received this information before. This gives you um, revenues through June 30, uh, 2023. Most of the revenue is uh, uh, actually better than what we anticipated and better than the prior year. Um, if you have specifics about the particular types of revenue, um, please ask. Uh, the revenue doesn't come in for each particular thing the same way. For instance, things like property taxes, as most taxpayers know, you pay uh, in, I think it's in November, and we get the largest part of it, of the property tax in December, and then another piece in, in April. And then things like sales tax, we get monthly, but it lags behind a couple of months because it goes through the through the state of California. So that's just a couple of examples of the way the revenue, uh, how different the revenue comes in. Also in this, this report, uh, it also gives you, because um, uh, we're required by law to give you the investment information with how the trending of um, interest rates and treasury notes, um, which have uh, actually um, started to come back up over the past uh, nine, ten months, um, where it's been basically flat and hasn't had much activity for quite some time, as you know. And um, that's about it. Um, you also receive the uh, what we have in uh, the local agency investment fund, which just is a fund that the state has, um, and we have a small amount of money there, um, and that's required to be also be reported to you, and it also gives you the, the market valuation actually for the entire state, um, which is also a requirement because we are a part of, uh, of LAFE. Of course. Hey, Muriel, uh, just a couple of simple questions. No, no, no tough ones, I promise. <laughs> um, property tax, you feel pretty good that the number we've got in front of us total for the year is it's plus accurate. Minus a very small amount. It's, it, it's accurate. What happens sometimes is we get some small uh, allocations for people who have paid late or there's different assessments that may happen. But it's generally under ten or twelve thousand dollars, and it, it'll usually come in in August. So if there was an additional bump there, it wouldn't it wouldn't have been much. Right. And sales tax, you show through August. August. But does that mean we've collected all our sales tax through June? Through so June. that August payment was for June. And so so that's a final number. Yep. And then, and TOT, is that kind of the same scenario where we're, bye, John. Um, is that the, uh, so that, that's, these are also, these are our final numbers. Pretty much, yes. Well, there may be some small, room, there may be some small changes, but uh, basically this is it, yes, indeed. Okay. Thank you. That's You're very that. welcome. Uh, when do you anticipate, I'm not sure what the uh, current status is of the audited financials, are we... The audit hasn't started. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, actually, he's planning on being here in the next couple of weeks. Uh, at this point, I'm still working on reconciling grants and um, some receivables and working with Pace Engineering to make sure all of their invoices have been uh, submitted to whatever grant or it is for reimbursement. So I'm going carefully going through that and making sure it all reconciles as far as what um, what our loan balances are for things like the wastewater treatment plant, what our grant balances received are for all of those, and making sure that every everything is in the right bucket, so to speak. Wonderful. Thank you. Any other? Yes. Uh, Muriel, um, at the uh, Cal City's uh, annual uh, conference a couple weeks ago, a few weeks ago, uh, one of the breakout sessions was on 
uh, financial JPAs, specifically really about class, uh, which apparently is a new um, recommended alternative or uh, in addition to LAIF um, that Cal City started uh, with others a couple years ago. Um, has triple A rating, um, high uh, fund availability, like next day availability, uh, and is getting, or has been getting somewhere close to 2% more than LAIF. Uh, so at the breakout session, they weren't suggesting that the cities move all their funds out of LAIF, but did suggest the possibility of uh, diversifying. I did give your uh, name and contact information to one of the uh, representatives. I don't know if she's contacted you or not. I did give uh, city manager some paperwork on that also. I don't know if you've gotten that yet or not, but uh, I would imagine Todd will be giving that to you in the near yeah, future. Yeah, I, I can say that there's a, there are a lot of options for different types of, of investments that, um, diversify a portfolio and uh, we've had lay for, for quite some time. Uh, it may not be the, the, the best option as they're, they're pretty heavily in, in some, some things that aren't, aren't earning a lot of interest. It's basically where's, how are they pooling the money essentially and then where is the risk as you know and then, then finding out where, where that leads you. So. It's about, you know, making sure that, that you're not taking um, too much risk in, in your investments, too. And I explained that you're the person that they need to talk to, that you would know which questions to ask and which uh, matters. So, but I anticipate that's going to be coming up in the next couple of weeks following the conference. Sure. So, Muriel, um, it sounds like you still have some uh, pending numbers. But um, do you have any feeling? Not not so much on revenue. Revenue is right, pretty much I, tied uh, down. It's, it's the side. expenditure side, and it's. Do you have any feel for how we're coming in against the the expected deficit? Better, maybe the same. It's about the same. It's, so the mm -hmm. projection yep. is. You think yep. it's going to hold? Okay. So receivable once receivables are booked, which is that that revenue piece, that um, like all of the expenses are already in. Pardon me, so about four hundred. Yep. Okay. So you think that might hold? Yep. Okay. Uh, Muriel, if I may, one more question. Uh, sales tax uh, this year with our, that final number is up about 2% versus last year's. Mm -hmm. And given that inflation was 6, 7, 8% during that time frame, um, is it reasonable to say that the net pullback of sales during this year versus the previous one was moving into a post-COVID time where people could travel away from the city and do their shopping where the sales tax went to Medford or, or Reading as compared to when everybody was here and shopping online, sales tax came back to us. Is, 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 do you see that as a, a, a core element of the correction that yeah. No, actually I don't. I, I, I see it more as I think a lot of people even post-COVID are still online shopping. I think that... Um, don't we get all sales tax from online shopping? Yes, we do. Okay, so sales only went up 2%. Prices went up 6 7 8%. Therefore, people net... Come back. People, people are cutting back. People are cutting somewhere. back. Okay. People are cutting back. I think, I think the tourists are cutting back at the restaurants. They're going, but they don't spend as much. Yeah. Just trying to understand why we're where we are. That's all. I'm, I'm just, I'm not trying to tell you. I'm just trying to go. So you're disappointed in number two. So am I. Yeah. And I think it's really problematic. So we'll have to see if we need to change projections for next year. Because, right, it should have, should have been up higher. I'm, uh, one would hope. I'd be interested to see how July and August shape up for the rest of the summer um, before we panic. <laughs> but yes. Yeah, we'll remain rational. 
For me, yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you, Muriel. Those, those reports are very helpful. I appreciate it very much. Thanks, Muriel. You're welcome. All right. Um, committee updates. Todd, is there any, any DAC yeah. or? Okay. Yeah, the DAC committee met. Um, they are great. They're moving full steam ahead. They're, I don't know if they've laid the pad yet for the flower life statue, but they're, it's imminent. I, you know, I, I'm, I'm assuming it's up. I haven't seen it. Uh, they are, um, They've got approval, uh, like I've mentioned before, from PPL, PPNL, uh, for wrapping power boxes. We've got three approved designs. What they want to do now is go out for a design competition uh, among the local artists and with the high school to see if we have some folks come up with some uh, designs based on specific themes that they create. And uh, uh, we produced a an agreement that lays out what the city's expectations are, you know, that they don't use AI, there's no copyright um, infringement, and, you know, we have final right to, um, uh, to you know, reject a design uh, based on, you know, uh, whether you're advertising or you're pushing an agenda, um, or just the, the design itself is inappropriate, but it's it's something that will protect the city a bit and sets the ground rules for what we're looking for as part of that that um, design competition. So I'm excited. It's going to be good. Wonderful. Okay, and nothing from library beautification or active transportation? So, um, no, we didn't have an official library meeting. We had a... Friends of the library meeting discuss what do we do post RFP, and um, you know, as you may know, there uh, the friends of the library are volunteering right now. Um, they, you know, we do, the RFP that went out was I think was asking for too many things. It was looking for somebody that could come in, um, act as the the library manager also come with their own team that knows finance and uh, um, basically come up with an entire team. And I think that turned a lot of people off. I got a call from somebody in from Chicago that was interested in a library manager role, but when she saw the posting, it just, it was crickets. So, um, you know, we talked about pulling that RFP apart and looking at it again. And then where we landed, and we still need to, to nail this down, is an agreement with um, Cheryl Bauer and Evelyn, and um, you know Ted Marconi was at that meeting as well, is that they have somebody in-house that's actually studying library science. And they, um, at this moment, are would prefer to, to keep going as volunteers and let this internal person get up to speed until they feel like they can hand the, handle the management portion of this and then it'll be solved. If, if that's the case, we probably need to um, have an MOU with them to ensure that, that uh, everybody gets paid and every, uh, you know, all the ground rules are laid out and what the expectations are. Um, and so we're going to meet sometime this week or next uh, when I can get the friends of the library back together and, and try to hammer that stuff out. So uh, it, it could end up working out really well, um, but you never know when somebody's in school, they may decide they want to take another different, a different tact. So, um, but that that's the route that they want to go for now. Great. Um, and just so the rest of council is aware um, as part of the library group, we have been waiting to hear if we've been accepted for the large library grant that we've applied for. Um, it was our understanding that we should have heard by September, so it should be any day now, which will determine what route we go for, for construction and size and all that. So yeah, still waiting. There, there, so Ted called um, and was told it'll be the end of September, potentially um, the first week in October. So, uh, soon. Yeah, wonderful. Thank you very much. 
All right, moving on to agenda item number seven, consent agenda. The city manager recommends the approval of the following consent agenda items. All resolutions and ordinances on this agenda or added hereto shall be introduced or adopted as applicable by title only and the full reading thereof is hereby waived. A, approval of minutes, September 25th, 2023, regular meeting. B, approval of disbursements, accounts payable, 918, 919, 922, and 10423, total gross payroll and taxes for period ending 91723. C, monthly investment and financial report. D, second reading and adoption of ordinance CCO-23-10. Amending chapters 18.08, 18.16, and 18.98 of the Land Development Code of Mount Shasta Municipal Code to comply with emergency shelter regulations and state law, sections 65582 and 65583 of the California Government Code. E, approval of the memorandum of understanding between the City of Mount Shasta and the Mount Shasta Recreation and Parks District. And F, Police Department Report, September 2023. All right, move to approve consent agenda items A through F by title only. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes 5-0. Agenda item number eight, approval resolution CCR-23-29. Authorizing city manager to execute agreements with the California Department of Transportation for the city of Mount Shasta complete street plan. Todd. Yeah, so I've mentioned this before. Uh, Lake Street was scheduled for uh, full reconstruction and you know we got a flurry of complaints about uh, near misses and speeding on Lake Street. The, um, the lanes are extremely wide. Um, it's a, it's a straight stretch without stop controls for a while. And so um, before we actually moved to construction and given that we passed an active transportation plan, uh, we decided that maybe we could put the brakes on this and um, see about narrowing lanes, adding uh, bike lanes, um, improving pedestrian crossings, adding ADA ramps and, and lighting. Uh, and so, we applied for Caltrans Active Transportation Grant and we were successful. And the money that's coming in is for um, uh, planning and design. And that will uh, move us on to the level where we then can uh, work on a grant for, um, you know, for engineering and getting us to PSE. And then we just fold those plans into the reconstruction of Lake Street. And so for this, uh, for us to be able to accept the grant, we need to pass a resolution that lets me execute contracts related <clears throat> um, to this grant, uh, you know, so we're not, um, you know, so if we've got minor things, we're not going directly to council on everything and slowing the process down. Wonderful. Any questions? Yeah. Uh, city manager, when is... Uh Lake Street construction rehab beginning uh, supposed to start is it next summer it was um, supposed to start in the spring and so what we're looking at um, to get us through ps &E is probably uh, you know conservatively 25 26 but then FY uh, um, 25 so it looks uh, like it's gonna put off a year a couple years and um, but the thing is, when it is reconstructed, um, narrower lanes, um, less speeding, better uh, mo you know, mobility for those that are not driving, and it satisfies one element of the active transportation plan, which is um, pedestrianizing and adding bike lanes to Lake Street. So we're killing several birds with one stone, and we're bringing up some of the um, subpar ramps and missing ADA ramps. Uh, up to code, which will keep us from being sued. Always a good thing. Always a good thing. <laughs> Any other questions? All right, we'll open up to public comment. Anyone online wishing to speak? We do not have any hands raised. All right, we will close public comment. Back to council for a discussion or motion. Given their 
there seems to be no discussion points. Let's. Um, I'll move to re to approve resolution number CCR dash twenty three dash twenty nine. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Resolution of the City Council of the City of Mount Shasta authorizing the City Manager to execute agreements with the California Department of Transportation for the City of Mount Shasta complete street plan regarding Second. Lake Street. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Passes 5-0. Agenda item number nine, discussion possible action, appoint two members of the public to the Public Finance Authority. Todd. Yes, um, as the next step in the EIFD process for the city, we um, need to, you know, we have, have members on uh, the Public Finance um, Board. Uh, you know, there is a specific makeup and um, the, the hole that we need to fill is we need two members of the public to serve on that board when we're making decisions on how money is spent, tax increment is spent, um, and uh, in various parts of the non-contiguous district. And so um, it is, uh, we're taking this opportunity to pick folks that are, uh, you know, um, smart, no planning um, and or no finance to see if uh, you know we can get the right fit on the board so we can uh, have sound decision making along with the other members and um, I know Mayor Clure has a couple proposed recommendations for that role and um, I wanted to um, just turn this back over to Council to see if there are any other uh, suggested um, candidates and to let uh, Mayor Clure put forth her candidates. Thank you. Uh, yeah, so my two recommendations um, were my father, Dorian Aiello, for his knowledge of the city plus his knowledge of tax finance. Um, and John Adamson, I think he has a great um, also knowledge of the city. I believe he was either on council or a planner and pre I, I can't remember planner planning commission um, and he's come to me a number of times with with great ideas for how to in particular use the landing and other um, city owned property so I think he'd be a great addition to but open to everyone's ideas of who you would feel madam mayor so I assume you've talked to these people and they're interested. That's that's my key concern. They actually want to do this. I have spoken to Dorian. I have not spoken to John Adamson yet. Okay, well, I'll see him tomorrow. Can I throw out a name? Of course, yes. Um, when I saw this, um, I figured, well, it's better speak up. <laughs> uh, I contacted Jeff well, actually, Tim and I both contacted Jeff Harkness, um, certified financial planner, financial consultant, been on city council, been mayor. He's pretty good and kind of balanced, uh, center of the road kind of guy. And I just, I thought, well, we're considering. That's great, mm -hmm. um, and we spoke to him and he's willing to to serve well he is if Todd gives me the right numbers which are don't don't look panic this is this is a joke um, <laughs> um, what his what his requirements are for time and I made something <laughs> up and okay. said about once a month a couple hour meeting I have no idea what how far off am I I don't think you're far off. I, and I think that um, what is far off is uh, the time when we actually when we actually start meeting. I think it's at least a couple months away. I mean, I remember when we first started discussing this, you know, to get the formation completely done, we're looking at about a year. Right. Uh, and so that doesn't mean we can't do pre-planning. But even when we get up to speed, uh, you know, we're, we're not going to be seeing enough increment to be making major decisions for a number of years, but it doesn't mean we can't meet and strategize about, um, you know, as we get increment in, what are the, what are the things that we need to, um, to serve the city most? 
right. uh, one of the most important things. So I, I think your idea of uh, a couple hours a month is probably more than we'll need up front. And I think that that's as good of a guess as any. Okay, just as so long as I didn't grossly underestimate. Um, no. that's, that's, that's what no. I was trying to avoid. Thank you. Definitely not. I would just like to uh, second the recommendation of, of Jeff Harkness uh, from working with him uh, for a number of years on city council. Uh, my impression is he's a financial whiz um, and um, has familiarity with city finances, finances in general, uh, has shown his leadership or involvement in the past successfully. Yeah, I think he's a great recommendation. Any other names to throw in? A suggestion may be that we pick two and pick an alternate. Yeah, that's a great idea too. I don't want to cut you off if you're thinking or if, are you thinking? Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Well, we already have the three of you uh, as the council members, right? Correct. Okay. Are we supposed to pick somebody tonight? Is that what we're doing? Yeah. So why don't we go um, keep thinking. We can, we can do this during discussion as well, but let me open up formally to public comment if there's anyone online that would wish to speak. There's no hands raised. Okay. That didn't buy you much time. We'll close public comments. <laughs> I would move that the two individuals uh, for the public positions be Dorian Aiello and Jeff Harkness. I'll second that one. I think they are the best qualified. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Okay. Dorian Aiello, Jeff Harkness, pass 5-0. Well, I didn't want to put any pressure on anyone. <laughs> if we had came up with a fourth name, I would have. <laughs> I think he'd be great. Okay. Moving on to agenda item number 10, discussion, possible action from shifting from a one-year to a two-year budget process. Muriel. If you guys would like to do a two-year, <laughs> I can't, I'm keeping it very, very just short and sweet. If you, if you want to do a two-year budget, when? One we'll, sentence. We'll, we will do it. <laughs> we will find a way to do well, it. What do, you, will, what do you think? Do you, do you do you, from your, where you sit, I do you think, think there are I think when you get out, out into the second year, the, the information isn't, isn't as valuable. Yeah. But if you're doing, watching it carefully and doing updates and modifying it as you go along, I think you, come, you can come much closer. So, I, yeah, let's do it. Let me ask you this. Is it, to you, in your opinion, is it worth the extra time to forecast out that much in advance uh, <clears throat> to see a benefit from doing that, or will the numbers be... Have to be changed. Have to be changed and, and therefore not worth the time to do it? Well, I still think it's worth it. Okay. I, um, the numbers will have to be changed. It's just like anything. It's just like the, the one-year budget. They get, that gets changed, too. So the more information you have, um, I think the, the more value council has to make decisions. That's just my, my two cents. Wonderful. Good question. Sure. Uh, Muriel, Amira, do you happen to know uh, what, or, or any of you who recently attended the city council training meeting, um, what the standards are for 10,000 people and above cities? What is the standard financial uh, forecasting? Is it one year, two year, three year? What's normal? I have no idea. Place. I mean, I, I, you know, I do know that that I'll be doing this this first two year one, but after that, it'll be the new finance director who'll be doing it. So, well, well pardon me for jumping here, but Jeff, <laughs> what what was normal in Calistoga? Uh, Calistoga was one year. My you previous city 
was 35,000 and that was a two year budget cycle. Okay. From the staff's perspective, I can tell you, I, I felt like I had a little more breathing room with the two year cycle. Yeah, okay, thank you. Todd, did you, were you gonna say something? Did you wanna say anything? <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, I, um, I I know a number of the cities up here, uh, some go with two-year budgets, and I think more go with a one-year approach. I think the, the big thing is, like Muriel said, when you start getting out into the second year, um, you know, it's, it's, more, it's better than a finger, a wet finger in the wind, but it's, um, you know, it's, it's more of a guess. But it, 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 what it can do is help you plan... Um, over a longer time horizon for any expenses that are coming up and how do we um, adjust to uh, uh, the economic climate that we're seeing uh, in front of us. Thank so you. Pros and yeah. Any other questions? Yeah. Um, so the, the audit will still be a yearly audit for the each fiscal year. It doesn't matter that you're budgeting for two months. I would uh, make a motion that. Well, hang on. We have to do a public comment. Oh. <laughs> we do not have any answers. Okay. We have opened and closed public comment. <laughs> Go ahead. I make a motion that the uh, uh, city council uh, move to a two year budget for the city of Mount Shasta. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes 5-0. All right, agenda item number 11. Any outside meetings yeah. to report? Okay. I, I, I had one with the um, Collier Interpretive and Information Center, but frankly, we were really just rehashing items from previous meetings, um, developing the brochure, um, other developing and finishing other projects re related to um, souvenirs and stuff that would be given out at the at the center. Um, the budget is, is still looking good. They have about $26,000 in the bank, so not much to report. And that happened at um, fourth Tuesday in September. Thank you. Anyone else? All right. Uh, agenda item number 12, future agenda items and meetings appearing on the agenda within 60 to 90 days. A, discussion, possible action, staff recommendations for improved snowplow operations on 10-23-23. B, amendment to the municipal code camping ordinance, 10-23-23. C, discussion and possible action, McLeod Avenue parking prohibition to be determined. D, discussion, possible action, regarding the Active Transportation Committee to be determined. E, approval of funds to complete a survey of Washington Avenue to be determined. F, amendment of the Parklet Ordinance to be determined. And future agenda items over 90 days. That's a typo. G, discussion, possible action, review of Chapter 13.95, extraction, exportation of groundwater from the city of Mount Shasta. Anything to add? By all means, sir. Well, I'd like to take the temperature of the council uh, regarding the concept of sidewalks. We don't have them completed, and as best I can figure out, we are not following our own laws relative to property. We, no, we just discussed and made motion actions on A month did, ago. Did, did we? Didn't, yeah. yeah. Didn't we? Yeah. yeah. We have an enforcement code. We're not following you. No, no, it's okay. I'm, I'm, what was the disposition of, of that? What came out of that action? Oh, uh, you know, per California law, sidewalks and up to the curb itself are the responsibility of the property owner. Right. And that we would have... Um, we, we put in place the enforcement mechanisms with the help of staff, particularly uh, chief, um, 
Gibson to um, have a methodology for improving the sidewalks. And I thought at the time, okay, it's okay on paper, but it's just going to be an extremely slow process um, because people, I, I think a lot of people just don't understand that they are responsible for the sidewalks you know, on their property. So um, short of canvassing all the, all the properties that have faulty sidewalks, and doing something about it quickly. It's gonna take a long time to rebuild all the bad sidewalks and then the sidewalks that don't exist. I think the property owner, at the given property owner now, isn't obligated to build a sidewalk at all and only the new, a new purchaser of that property would be. So yeah, it's gonna, uh, what, what are you getting at though? Plan B. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's here. Uh and again, I don't know if the council has any appetite for this. I don't know if it's a good idea. I do, probably. Well, it, it's picking a time frame, five years. I don't know what it is. And say, you, don't, you have bad sidewalk or no sidewalk, you must have sidewalk at your expense in five years. Chief, do you, yeah. <laughs> what, Chief, do you remember, I thought we did instill a time frame. Do you remember what that was? Uh, I believe we gave them two times to fix it, um, that they had to show that they had arranged for fix it. I do not have that right off the top sure. of my head. I do know that while we were out looking for snow plow uh, and operations down on South Mount Shasta Boulevard with the... Uh, we were approached by a concrete uh, contractor, so we're going to get his name up on the website once it's built because he's out of Reading and said, hey, I'll come do sidewalks. And I believe that the code enforcement officer is sending out letters this week to some very bad sidewalks. Wonderful. And our new machine just came in, which is going to be a whole lot cheaper, and we will be getting those uh, the next week or two. We're waiting on the paper to get the pamphlets out to the downtown uh, areas, and it'll also be on our thing. So we're working towards it, and we're actually taking some actions. Um, but uh, I can get back to you with the, the okay. Case. So but it, it was sounds like, two like 30 day periods or something like that to get it great. Fixed. So it does sound like that the sidewalk issue is is moving mm -hmm. and will be okay. Yeah, I was going to clarify to the, the I'm sorry. Um, uh, the chief kind of brushed over that as we, we had um, we put together a booklet outlining uh, California law and what the requirements of property owners are and under grant money that the police department put together. Uh, Chief Gibson has been um, using them to print out uh, um, these pamphlets to be, be used to pass out to um, homeowners that have sidewalks that are in, in uh, let's say, rough shape. Tim? Yes. Uh, now that we have a, a city planner on board, um, he'll have an opportunity perhaps to look at the state of the policies. Um, and recommendations uh, and it perhaps come back with some ideas uh, that he thinks would be appropriate in the future. Yeah, good idea. Uh, we have been saying these words for uh, several months. We can't wait for the city planner to get here for this. So your desk, I'm sure, is very full of all of these things that we've been waiting for you. Um, one thing that I was wanting to add, uh, one, problem, I don't know if it's a problem, but one fear I have is with election years coming up, are we going to attract people to run for office and are we going to have new um, ideas? You know, I, when I was at the Cal Cities uh, conference, I was asking some of them, how do you incentivize people that we don't see in our um, chairs, you know, our volunteerism seems to be dissipating. So I've been thinking about how to do that. And I've come up with a couple ideas that I would like to see on the agenda to see if Rustic Council agrees with me. One of which would be offering health insurance to council members as a way to incentivize their participation. And then uh, potentially setting term limits on council members as well. <laughs> Okay, so I'll, I'll agree to both tentatively um, on the first. So you want uh, staff to come in with what the potential costs are. Yes. And it would be optional for 
because it would be optional like um, yes and if council opted out you know if if you don't need the insurance or if you're covered on your spouses what that looks like if is there a stipend in, in lieu of and vice versa, vice versa um, do we you get the insurance but get the insurance get the stipend. Get the stipend. Okay. Okay. mayor clear would you yes. also consider uh, an adjustment to the city council pay, which hasn't been adjusted for years. Certainly. If we vote to increase, uh, it does not affect uh, the current sitting members. Uh, it would be uh, effective when new members come on. So that's another yeah. possibility. Yes. And yet another possibility that you might consider, and you might be good at it, uh, is to go to the local schools and talk to the school children who aren't in a position to run for city council, but perhaps they would interest their parents or raise the sure, issue yeah, with their great parents. great idea. Yes, I like all of those. So yeah, it, increasing the stipend is a possibility, but um, I think we just need to have a fresh look and, and see if what we're offering yeah. Well, you, is you can put that on the agenda yourself, but yeah. if you're looking for a second, fine. And then on, on the term limits, uh, that's pretty much a standard in California, I think. Um, what do you have in mind for that? Uh, I was. Yeah, term limits are statutory for uh, elected statewide offices, yeah. but not for local offices, uh, whether it's but, it's county level or city level. But what did you what did you have? Well, in mind? I think we can look and see what what other cities are doing. Mm -hmm. But I was off the top of my head. I was thinking four terms, or yeah, uh, four terms. So, do you want that to be? voted on by the public, right, or no? Because that's kind of how we've done it here in California. In I have past. no idea. <laughs> Would it be a ballot measure? Oh, okay, so what's your preference on that? To do it internally versus, yeah, yeah versus. I would say do it internally and save. Oh, yeah. I don't know, um, I might disagree with that, but okay, let's. Yeah, we can see what, how that looks and just have a discussion about it. See how everyone feels. Okay, so I agree with the four-year term, uh, or you would want the public to decide the term limit. Is that what you mean? I think that's appropriate. Okay. First, yeah, yeah. Do, does does the do the residents of Mount Shasta want term limits for their I representatives? See. So yeah, I think so. I think that's something that should be added to maybe the March ballot if there's time, which I think there is. And won't cost much. Yeah, I'm good with it. It, does, it doesn't matter to me. Yes, sir. When you guys are done, I have one more important announcement from the police department. Oh, okay. But before we go. Okay. Did you have some? I just, I think uh, you're talking about two different things. One is trying to attract people to run for a city council. Uh, Having a term limit isn't a way of attracting people to run for term counts uh, for for city council, but I think that we can come up with other ideas uh, of and basically getting the word out. Certainly, yeah. Yes, Chief. So, in the next couple of days, we are expecting a new member to the police department family. So, I just wanted our dispatcher is out now, and I think the eleventh is the. Date, so we should be looking for a new uh, Leo on the 11th. Excellent. Uh, that reminds me, when I went to a police-focused uh, meeting at this Cal Cities event, and everyone is trying to come up with a way to get the police force more in the public, and, and everyone agreed that coffee with a cop doesn't work, <laughs> that the same two people show up. Um, so... Yeah, if, if you guys think of anything, especially with, with so many new officers, maybe have some kind of event where we can invite the public to come and meet, and, and it could be a citywide thing where we have a lot of our staff and council. Well, I know uh, coming up here in October, November, we're getting ready to start going back to the high school for their thanks, thankful Thursdays where we participate and play with the kids and stuff like that, so that's up. And, um, Anytime somebody wants to come by, say hi. Yeah. Um, the officers are always out there. We can put something together with the dogs. Yeah, wonderful. Chief, bringing, bringing the new officers to a city council meeting, I, I think, is a good way to introduce them, not only to the yeah. council members, but to the fact that it's videoed uh, to members of the community. Yeah, it was my 
plan, but he's on the other end of the week, and I got sidetracked on the awards, and that slipped <laughs> my mind. So I will bring him in. He will be in next council meeting Great. to say hi. And as if well you as think our dispatcher. Great. And if you think of anything in the meantime of of how to get them more um, in our in our public, just let me know, and we can think of something. That'd be great. Anything else? Uh, real quick, you got a yes. second on both of your options, right? With the term owners and the insurance, you second in both? Okay. No, there's just the details. Okay. Kind of important details. Yeah. yeah. All right. Thank you very much. You think eight years?